Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Marilyn Anderson, Administrator and Executive Director for the Crow Wing County Historical Society Museum and Research Library and Restored Sheriff's Residence. Our building is on the National Register of Historic Places and we have a wonderful county museum and a research library open to the public and the Sheriff's Residence, which was connected directly to the jail in the same building where the sheriffs lived with their families for the most part. And it's a beautifully restored building. Um, it's all restored to early 1900s with lots of county artifacts and furniture that's been donated. Um, this house was very modern for its day in 1917 when it was built. It had electricity, central heat, and gas heat, and hot and cold running water, which um, was, was kind of not the norm. And it is a beautiful home. The floors are hardwood maple, and the woodwork in the lower level of the sheriff's residence is oak, and upstairs in the bedrooms it's maple. We're in the kitchen of the historic sheriff's residence, and this kitchen is my favorite room. The cabinets are oak, and they're original. And the sheriff's wife had the lovely job of cooking for all the prisoners, too. So they did get a stipend for that, for obviously for buying food and cooking and serving all the prisoners. There's actually three flower bins. It was a sign to me that she did a lot of cooking. The jail, which is attached to the sheriff's residence, is directly on the other side of this wall. The walls between the jail and the sheriff's residence are 18 inches of concrete. So the families were, you know, pretty safe and there was barred doors where the where they would have came in or out of the residence into the jail. This is where the wife and or cook in the later years when the sheriffs didn't did choose not to live here, they passed the trays of food to the prisoners. I'm walking in from the kitchen of the sheriff's residence and it had a really cool swinging door into the dining room of the sheriff's residence. And I love the built-in buffet, and I wanted to make sure that everyone knows it's the beautiful leaded glass and the tulip stained glass that's in the buffet, and it's carried over into the transoms of the windows in the parlor and the dining room, and the front porch that goes almost the full length of this house um, on the main street, Laurel Street, which we face. We're now in the parlor of the sheriff's residence. And the parlor is pretty large, and it's got really nice windows. The piano in here is a Steinway grand piano, but it's a rectangular grand piano, which I had never seen before. And one of the things that I like to show, especially to the, to the kids, I always ask them what's in this big gilded frame over here. It's hair woven, and it was real popular in the Victorian era, and a lot of times it was done in in memory of a loved one that had passed away, um, a lot of times they might have taken some of grandma's old jewelry and woven it in like pearls or pieces of earring or pins or brooches. And it really can be quite intricate and it was a pretty involved process. I'm standing in the upper level in the hallway. All these hallways in this, this house were just so wide. And there's a nursery up here too, which is really unique because it has two doors on it one going from the hallway and then one from a bedroom and originally there was one small window that you could peek in and we have made the windows larger now because we're using it for exhibit space and down the hall is another bedroom and a bathroom the bathtub is long i have never seen such an old-fashioned long bathtub and some visitors say wasn't it originally, didn't it have claw feet? No, it, it never did. It always sat on the floor. And of course, like I said, 1917, and they did have hot and cold running water, so they had a fancy bathroom with a huge bathtub. Where I'm standing actually used to be two smaller bedrooms at one time. The bedroom on the right would have been the master bedroom. The bedroom on the left was where the, uh, the children would sleep and or later on a matron, because on the the wall where the headboard is was the women's jail cells so that she could could hear them or be close to the, the women um, prisoners. 
This desk that I'm standing by has some significance because it was donated by Mr. Lum, who actually started the Crow Wing County Historical Society in 1923, gave $500 and his desk. Um, and so it's got his initials carved in the upper part and it's got some little secret compartments in it. And so this is how the Historical Society got started. $500 and a desk. We're now in the two jail cells that were women jail cells when this was an active jail. Like I said, 1917 through the late 60s. And each jail cell had a window. And in between the two jail cells, there was a shower with no light. Um, it looks like kind of like a little dungeon, but there is a shower head back there, but no light because they believed that those criminal women would have used that light bulb as a weapon. So there is no light in there. This like I said, was a jail with 13 jail cells. So when it closed in the late 60s, they were gonna tear it down when they built the new county jail. But some citizens got together and thank God they saved it. So it took a long time, but it was gutted. The, the cell area was gutted for the museum. And so it's, it's all ramped and there's different levels of Crow Wing County history. And the first level is uh, logging, which was like the first big um, settlement uh, industry. And the next level up is the railroad, which was huge. It was supposed to go through a different small town and they were all excited at Old Crow Wing where it was going to, it was gonna, they thought for sure that the railroad, the Northern Pacific was gonna buy land there. And lo and behold, no, they picked Brainerd. So Old Crow Wing ended up to be a dying town and uh, it's now Crow Wing State Park and uh, Brainerd was the home of the Northern Pacific Railroad. And we still have some shops here that are active and it's also on the National Register, those shops. So the next level is railroading exhibit. The next level up is more of a community level with uh, lots of artifacts. We have a huge loom up there. We have farming artifacts. And um, on the ramps, because it is all ramped, really wide ramps with lots of um, wall space, we have wonderful historic paintings and um, a Native American exhibit with some of the most beautiful beadwork I believe that I've seen. Um, next on one of the ramps is a mining exhibit because first came the logging to the county then the railroad and when the last pine tree was cut then um, thank goodness there was iron ore discovered in the Cuyuna Deerwood uh, at Crosby Ironton area, so there was mining. You can't forget about our research library, which we get a lot of visitors that are doing genealogy or any kind of historic project, whether it's a writer for a local paper or, um, or anything. We have newspapers on microfilm, a historic photo collection. People can get reprints of photos and just a lot of a wealth of information. We're really proud of, of what we've done and what people that before me have done. Uh, we rely heavily on volunteers and uh, the community has been more than supportive in donating artifacts, which we continue to accept and you know, appropriate for Crow Wing County. And we just think that this is a hidden jewel, a hidden, hidden gem in Crow Wing County in this lakes area. And we're very proud of, uh, of what has been done and what we continue to do. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.